Let's find the time derivatives of r hat and theta hat. In the previous few videos, we differentiated r hat and theta hat with respect to theta, and then in a separate video, we used the chain rule to find the time derivatives of those two unit vectors. In this video, I'm going to do all of that in one derivation. So we're going to explicitly differentiate everything with respect to time. We're going to break up r hat and theta hat into its horizontal and vertical components, and then we're going to differentiate each of those components with respect to time. And we're going to have to use the chain rule uh, to do those derivatives. So let's start off by looking at the definitions of r hat and theta hat in terms of i hat and j hat. i hat and j hat are the Cartesian uh, coordinate system. So these guys are the unit vectors we use for Cartesian coordinates. I hat is the unit vector that points in the horizontal direction, and j hat is the unit vector that points in the vertical direction. These guys actually depend on the angle, so their direction is not predetermined. Their direction depends on where the particle is. So if we're in polar coordinates and we're looking relative to the origin, what is the angle uh, of that particle? That angle is going to determine where the radial direction is and where the tangential direction is. So the radial direction is wherever the particle is pointing. So wherever the particle is relative to the origin of the polar coordinate system. So the angle actually determines the direction. And indirectly, these guys are determined by time. So i hat and j hat don't depend on time. They are fixed. They are always going to point in the same direction. i hat will always point along the horizontal direction, and j hat will always point along the vertical direction. But these guys are going to point in different directions at different times. That's because at different times, there could be different angles. And the particle that's moving along could actually be at different angles relative to the origin. And these angles could be time dependent, right? Because r and theta are the coordinates that we're using to describe locations in polar coordinates. And those coordinates could depend on time. Exactly the same as x and y. x and y can depend on time in Cartesian coordinates. So we can have x dots and y dots. Those are velocities in uh, the horizontal and the vertical directions. So let's go ahead and differentiate both of these guys with respect to time. And when we do that, we're going to have to differentiate each of the components. But we have to keep in mind that i hat and j hat don't depend on time. Right? These guys are not changing. But these guys will be changing. The sines and the cosines, because they depend on an angle, will actually depend on time. There is no t. You can see there's no t appearing in this equation. But that t is implicitly hidden inside here, because theta actually depends on time. Theta is that coordinate that depends on time. It's exactly the same as we can have x of t, that can depend on time, y of t, that can depend on time, and this is in Cartesian coordinates. And in polar coordinates, we can also have r of t, the radial distance away from the origin, that depends on time, and theta of t. That can also depend on time. So all of these coordinates, these are the polar coordinates and these are the Cartesian coordinates, these guys can all depend on time. And if they depend on time, then they're going to change with respect to time. So they're going to have time derivatives. Let's go ahead and differentiate this guy with respect to time. So dr hat with respect to time. Let's differentiate this guy with respect to time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that definition that we have up here I'm going to put it in some brackets, and then we're going to look at each of the components individually. So I'll write down cosine of theta times i hat plus sine of theta times j hat. And that's what we have. What's going to happen to this cosine of theta? Well, cosine of theta is going to turn into minus sine of theta. That's what happens when you differentiate cosine of theta. And what's going to happen is we're going to have to use the chain rule, because we're differentiating with respect to time. We're not differentiating with respect to theta. So we have to differentiate with respect to theta, and then multiply by theta dot. And theta dot is the notation for the time derivative of theta. So let's do that. The horizontal component is going to, have, is going to look like this. We're going to have minus theta dot times the cosine turns to minus sine. So this is a sine theta. And that is the horizontal component. So you can see what happened over here. Cosine of theta, when we differentiated with respect to theta, turned into minus sine theta, and then we had to multiply by theta dot. That's the derivative of theta with respect to time. Let's do the exact same thing for the vertical component. So that's this term that actually multiplies j hat. 
So j hat just goes along for the ride because it doesn't change with respect to time. So sine of theta, that's going to turn to cosine of theta. But then we also have to include that factor of theta dot. So theta dot times cosine of theta. And what else do we have to include? j hat. Can you see something familiar emerging over here? Here we have a minus sine theta. Here's a minus sine theta. And here we have a cosine theta. That's a cosine theta. If we factor out this theta dot, we will get theta dot times theta hat. So let's write that over here. We have theta dot times theta hat. We have to be careful not to confuse these thetas with each other. Theta hat is the unit vector in the tangential direction. That's the direction where theta is increasing. Theta dot is the time derivative of the angle. And theta is the angle. So this is the coordinate. This is the time derivative of the coordinate. And this guy, theta hat, is a unit vector. So those are different quantities. And that's why we have to keep, uh, keep in mind what is going above. Is there anything above? If there's nothing above, then it's just the angle. If there's a dot above, then we're doing a time derivative. And if there's a little hat on top, then that's a unit vector. So we have found the time derivative of r hat. Let's do the same thing with theta hat. So let's do that down here. We can have the time derivative of theta hat with, so that's with respect to time. And let's write that out over here. We have d dt of, all right, this definition over here. So what we have is minus sine theta times i hat. That's the horizontal component. And the vertical component is cosine of theta that's times j hat. And what do we have over here? What we have to do is exactly the same stuff that we did to these guys. We have to differentiate sine theta with respect to theta. That's going to give us a cosine theta. And because there's a minus sign over here, we're going to get minus cosine theta. But we have to keep in mind there is a theta dot that needs to multiply because of the chain rule. So we have minus theta dot times cosine of theta i hat. So this is the horizontal component. What we have here is the theta dot comes out because of the chain rule. And this minus cos theta, that came from this minus sine theta. We differentiated with respect to theta. And this i hat just went along for the ride. And this j hat is also going to go along for the ride. Cosine of theta, that's going to turn to minus sine theta. So what we're going to have over here is minus theta dot times sine of theta. And that's in the j hat direction. So this cosine turned into minus sine, and then a little theta dot popped out, and that's the time derivative of theta. So what can we actually see from here? We can see that there's a minus theta dot multiplying cos theta i hat and sine theta, uh, sine theta j hat. So that combination is what we see up here. So we can identify r hat. What do we have to factor out to get r hat? We have to factor out minus theta dot. Over here, we just have to factor out theta dot. But over here, we have an extra minus sign. So I'll write that over here. We have minus theta dot times r hat. So that is that anti-symmetry. It's not a perfect symmetry because there's a minus sign. So if you differentiate r hat with respect to time, you'll get theta dot times theta hat. And if you differentiate theta hat with respect to time, you will get minus theta dot times r hat. So this minus sign comes from uh, some relationships between trigonometric functions. So why is this the same as differentiating? Why is differentiating the same as rotating 90 degrees? Because these guys are perpendicular to each other. That again comes from the unit circle. The unit circle is where we can actually uh, visually see all the trigonometric functions very clearly. And there's another video in this playlist. It's an earlier video where we looked at where this relationship comes from. Why is there a minus sine theta? And why does sine and cosine swap places? And where does this minus sign come from? So we talk about that in that video. And that relationship is very closely linked to why there is a minus sign over here. We're going to be using these relationships in the next few videos. These are going to be very important relationships because we need to know how the unit vectors are changing with respect to time. If the unit vectors are uh, not the same at every point in time, then we have to have other terms. There's other terms that take that into account. And we're going to look at those terms when we look at the velocity and the acceleration in polar coordinates. So you can find all of those videos if you click
over here.